ってしまう,うなんだそれはまさか布団布団布団だとはいこれは極楽布団と言いましてまあ夕夜様って来るということはそのものと結婚したい床を共にしたいって意味があるのよ<笑>やらかした貴様はここで残剣グレイクルのサビとなれ陛下深呼吸ですはい深呼吸お父様、うん、Yo This King Arnold dude is my type of dude. You know what I mean? He caused a ruckus in his own audience. His own guardsmen needed to be like, yo, dude, calm down. He's like, aren't you my subordinate? He's like, yo, I don't care. You need to calm down. You're in the audience. You're the king, dude. I love the I love King Arnold. He he's like, he's my spirit animal. I love this dude. Um, okay. So, a lot happened this episode. Another fantastic episode. 9 out of 10. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. This was a squeezed out episode、uh, that was just fire. Episode number nine. It's so crazy that we're nearing the end. And this episode finally had Yuya go and go to the royal palace and meet the king, which is finally happening here. And、uh, just for reference, just so everyone stays on track, we're on episode 11. We have episode 12 and 13. So we have two more episodes to wrap up this season. And this is also getting a, a currently airing dub, and the dub is fantastic. So I definitely suggest you guys should watch it. I've been re watching the episodes、uh, via the dub with the wife because she's really been interested in this one. This really caught her eye as well, too, because it's that good. Okay, so this episode, a lot of stuff happened. Let me kind of talk on the main points that I think are really worth hitting on this episode.、Um, one thing is, I think the, the very, very main thing that occurred this episode to me is the fact that Kaori came over to his house and、uh, she came over to study because Yuya isn't very good at math. She's been trying to find her way in and getting a leg up on the other girls that are seemingly in Yuya's life, which are a lot of them, okay? And she sees that this is kind of her end to get closer to him. Now, she does succeed, and this is, you know, he's the, she's the first girl to come over to his house. She succeeds there. One of the things that our boy forgot because he's a big old buffoon and a big old idiot is that when he was in the bathroom, the door to the other world is in the bathroom, which he did not close because he didn't think about it for whatever effing reason. And Knight nor Kotsky warned him of it. So, long story short, she finds the door, she finds everything, she says, It feels weird, somebody's calling me here, blah, 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 blah. He ends up just straight up telling her that, you know, this is a door, doorway to another world. I actually have magic. These, he tells her these impossible things, and, and she ends the end of all of this interaction. She goes, I'm glad that we share a secret now. So, I think that was kind of an interesting reaction for someone just to find out that this dude casually has. A door to another world and everything else. But, you know, at the end of the day, he takes her over there to the other world. She gets a status screen. Because of all her natural abilities, natural talents that she currently has, when she goes over to the other world, she starts off at a higher click than he did because he, obviously he was a very lowly individual when he got over to that world. So she has a status screen in that other world and she has better stats than him, which tells us, tells me that.、Um, You know, regular folks, if he allows it, can also become pretty powerful beings in this other world. So he can seemingly bring a, a very curated、uh, population of people that really matter to him. Maybe Kaori, you know, maybe a couple of different girls. He can bring them over to this world and they could also get abilities and things like that too. A curated experience from him. So I think that's pretty cool. But the main thing is he just straight up tells her everything. And at the end of it, Kaori was just very. Pleased to now be able to share a secret with him. Obviously, this anime is gearing or skewing more towards harem.、Um, you know, but considering that he has such a big secret, right? If he does her dirty in any way, like his secrets could come out. And Kaori is going to have to low key discover the fact that Luna exists, the fact that Lexia exists, and then all the other girls too. So it's like,、mm, how are they going to take that? But regardless, she appreciates the bond that they now share and everything. So that was kind of the main thing that happened in this episode. The one thing that was touched on at the beginning of the episode but wasn't touched on for the rest of the episode was his modeling recruitment.、Uh, the lady that is really looking to、um, you know, nail down his modeling stuff,、uh, she was very heavily pursuing him at the beginning of the episode. 
we didn't see anything else that happened at the end of the episode. Um, you know, basically, it just kind of came out that once the magazine he's in is published, she's going to make it impossible for him to say no. And she's already planning, like, how am I going to plan his debut kind of thing. So I think eventually he will be recruited uh, by this modeling agency, even if it's part-time or something, just because she's going to pin him into a corner. Uh, the other set of the episode was really just around um, Lexia's dad and him going to the royal palace for the first time. I like how the king is just crazy. He even licked his sword when he thought about Yuya. He's like, hey, I'm going to kill this dude. I like that. I like how Luna was accepted as her bodyguard. Uh, we learned that the crazy mask guy is actually the king's son. So he's trying to kill his dad to get the throne. He's trying to kill Lexia to get the throne. He's trying to get revenge on Lexia. So basically the the person who hired assassins is her brother. He puts together some plan to get a really big magic barrier. Uh, he sends assassins to finally finish him off to kill Yuya. And Yuya, Akatsuki, Knight, and the king even are able to defend all of them. Uh, we find out this episode too that he actually uh, gave uh, Lexia a bed because during one of his hunts he got a bed like a sheep bed, a paradise set bed. Another everyday item, as he calls it. And he gives that as a gift to Lexia because the king's like, yo, where's the gift that you're supposed to have? Uh, we find out that in this world, giving a bed to a woman means that you want to lay with her and wed her. Of course it does. Uh, so dad's not happy about that. And that's kind of where that, that portion of it ends, right after the assassination. Uh, and Lexia fawning all over Yuya, which the king was not happy about. Very last thing is I really did uh, find it enjoyable as well, too, for Yuya to finally spend some time in that world. He actually got to go to a couple of different towns, which is cool because he can use his teleportation magic to get back there at any point. He got his guild card, and he got 100 gold, which is par apparently enough. Five gold is um, enough money for a family to live on for 20 years. So he got 20, uh, 20 times that, which means that he now is pretty... Uh, wealthy in this world too and all he did was sell salt and pepper in a very distinguished glass uh, which is really really cool too so now he has somebody as a hookup to go and sell additional items to in this world as well too so he now has enough money to fund his stuff in this other world and then obviously in the real world too so very very good episode really really enjoyed it i thought this episode was fantastic and fire this anime just keeps hitting over and over and over again uh, I'm really glad that I have found two anime that I have really, really enjoyed back-to-back -back in different seasons here. And uh, Cheats Guild has just been fantastic. I'm still wondering who I think best girl is. It's such hard to choose, but I think right now Luna is number one for me. All right. Let me know what you guys thought about episode uh, 11 in the comments below. I'll see you guys in a few days for episode number 12. Stay healthy. Stay classy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.